A portfolio of his work from the 9-11 attacks in New York City was honored first place in Pictures of the Year, International Magazine, and Newspaper Photographers. I hope you will be touched by his remarks and appreciate this wonderful exhibit which features images from the first 36 hours following the horrific events of 9-11. Please join me in welcoming Aristide back to RIT. Thank you very much, Dr. Cummings, for those kind words. I hope you forgive me. Uh, I'm not naturally a public speaker, so I do have some notes. Uh, I feel more comfortable uh, behind the camera than in front of it, but uh, I believe I have hopefully some important things to say. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the RIT community, and specifically uh, Professor Snyder, for bringing me here. Um, it's it means a lot to come back here. Uh, I graduated in 94 and been very impressed to see how much has changed for the better and uh, to see how the students are really learning and growing and to see the future of this school go on. And it's pretty amazing to see the breadth of this day and how that RIT alumni were there. And it makes us aware that we have a very big, diverse group of alumni covering many different things. On that day, we weren't photojournalists. We became historians. For me, that's a little awkward because I think history is supposed to, you read something in a textbook. But this day will have a very valid impact on all lives for Americans and the rest of the world. The day started at 8.22 in the morning. I'm 30 years old, and I get a phone call from my mother. The night prior, I was out partying in Hoboken, drinking and being a typical 30-year-old, <laughs> flirting with this girl I liked at the time. I was really upset. I'm lazy. Let me sleep in. And that day really taught me the sense that don't take anything for granted. That could have been the last time I talked to my mom. After that phone call, I went back to sleep, and about a half hour later, a little over a half hour later, at 8.55, I get a phone call playing in the tower. And like most people, I thought somebody in a Cessna lost their way or something. So I quickly got my gear, and at the time, I was living on the Jersey City waterfront, and I was running to the ferry, and I heard a loud boom. That was actually the second plane hitting. I get to the ferry, and I took the ferry into Lower Manhattan, and it goes by Upper New York Harbor, right by the Statue of Liberty. And as a photographer, you're trained to focus on what you're doing. I knew it was a tragic day already. I had no idea what scope, though, but I wanted to focus on taking the pictures which would tell the story. So I lined up the Statue of Liberty with the burning towers and kept on taking the ferry into Lower Manhattan. I started photographing on Broadway, and people were getting first aid, and it was just a, a shock of what happened, what could this be? And I wasn't questioning it, though. It was just focusing on doing my job. I'm photographing along Broadway, and then all of a sudden I hear this rumbling sound, and I turn, onto John Street, and I get engulfed in dust. I go down a flight of stairs to seek shelter in the subway, and there's a gate blocking. And now it's gotten completely dark. It's hard to breathe. So I knew I didn't want to be there, so I started making my way using my hands in the complete darkness along the side of the building. And I came upon a door I originally tried to kick it in, but uh, I just pulled the handle and I went into the lobby at 2 John Street. So the initial loss of my life fear is now over and I'm just trying to compose myself. And about 30 seconds later, it's very dusty in this lobby, but it's not like outside. 
And I believe most importantly is you first have to be a human being. And as a journalist, you don't want to orchestrate what's happening. But I heard people's voices outside, so I opened the door and shouted for these people to come to my voice, come to shelter. So about a half dozen people came into this lobby, and it was a very dramatic scene. And I didn't orchestrate anything which happened there. There was a paramedic from a Orthodox Jewish paramedic group, and he started doing his job. He started taking care of people, making sure everybody was all right. I'm a photojournalist. I started doing my job and started taking pictures. In a picture, I believe it's up there, there's a photograph of these ladies hugging, and she's screaming, oh my God, we're alive, we're alive, oh my God, we're alive. And as a photographer, I'm focused on my job, and that's all I'm focusing on. I know it's a tragic event. It's like flipping a switch. The problem is, is flipping that switch back to your emotions. And that's what essentially post-traumatic stress is kind of like. So the same lady who was screaming out then asked me, why are you taking pictures? And now I gotta think, rather than just react. And I replied, we have to remember this, we can't forget. After that, nobody said anything else to me about me taking photos. The paramedic did though, and he only said this to me. He takes off his yarmulke and starts breathing through it, and turns to me, see, yarmulkes do come in handy. <laughs> and at a time when I wasn't really feeling anything, he brought a smile to my face. And that was one of the most important things, is I felt humanity once again. I continued photographing maybe in this lobby for about five to 10 more minutes, and it started getting clear outside, and I went out and started photographing again. Now in hindsight, after one tower had fallen, not maybe the smartest idea to go even closer, but I did. So originally I was one block away, now I go to the block on actual where the towers were on Church Street, which is the east border of essentially Ground Zero. And what I saw was just bizarre, it was hard for me to explain. And there's hardly anybody here now. It's this desolate, eerie, <coughs> dusty scene. And I I'm thinking, is this like the apocalypse? I mean, it was dark, and then all of a sudden the light would change. You gotta remember, it was a sunny, 70 degree day. And it all of a sudden get really yellow because the sun would come through the dust, then it would get reddish, it would get black, it, it was just bizarre. I felt like I was in a really bad movie. And I bumped into this photographer from the New York Post named Don Halsey. And I had two cameras from the newspaper which are normally given to us. Uh, both of those cameras, the shutter had busted. And so I took a w one camera on loan from our pool, from our library. And I was smart at least that day to quickly run out and take one of my own personal cameras, a film camera. So I got one Nikon and one Canon, both focused differently. And, uh, I'm photographing that day and I only took eight rolls of film. So I see this photographer who's photographing film and I asked him, can you help me out? This photographer, Don Halsey, gave me one of his last two rolls of film, which to me is just incredibly generous for that type of news story. And he turns to me and says, shoot smart. In other words, be very critical of what you take. I thank him profusely, and we start walking separately. I go up north, he goes south. About five minutes later, I hear a loud metallic roaming sound which I will always remember. I look up, and I'm literally 50 yards from the North Tower, and it just starts to splinter in front of me. Never thought about taking a picture or anything. I just start running as fast as I can north. And I'm running, and it starts this loud, rumbling staccato, boom, 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 boom. And it's starting to get dusty, and this ground is just shaking like a locomotive. 
And I, I see this photographer, and I'm just like shocked. And all I'm thinking of is just this run, run. And actually, I, I first run by him, and then me and him run. There's a big tour bus right parked on the street. And essentially, we dive to the side of the bus, and all the debris came flying this way. And essentially, that bus saved our lives. That photographer, Joe Tabaka, um, actually took a picture of me running, and that's the photo over there. And when I look at that picture, it looks so unreal because I, I have to, it feels like it's a bad movie poster. I'm thinking like Die Hard Bruce Willis and all this. And, and that's me, though. And I almost died. So, um, I, I, I take shelter from this bus, and I've already been through one of these really dark dust clouds once before. So, I knew there was a building behind us, and I just went backwards and started feeling my way, and turned the corner, and kept on walking the block down the street with this other photographer, Joe. And uh, we eventually got split up, and actually I ended up photographing him maybe five minutes later, and it's nice to be able to trade pictures of each other, so that was kind of cool. But I continued photographing that day. That's what I did. I'm a photographer. Uh, my eyes were starting to hurt. Um, I went to CVS, got um, saline solution, and then started to give it to other first responders also. Um, the ophthalmologist cringed when I told him this. I was wearing contacts at the time, which actually helped protect my eyes even more. But my right eye was so dry, the contact fell out, and I actually ended up taking out the left contact and putting it in my right eye. My hands were a little dusty at the time, too, so, but... Um, I had to see, I had to take pictures. Uh, adrenaline's a very powerful drug. So I continued photographing, and now both towers are down, and uh, I'm focusing on the people. Uh, the, the, the towers were just, as I said, steel and concrete, and the emotional effect of what has happened to the people. And so first responders were there, and I started handing out masks also to help them out. And we all helped each other out. Hey, there's uh, some loud noises, maybe explosions, whatever. Be careful if you go down there. Actually, most of all these pictures are shot along Church Street, which is the east border. So I continue photographing, and I go into uh, on Broadway, I go back further east. Um, there is a Chase Manhattan Bank, and I go there. And there's a picture, I believe, upstairs. There is a New York City traffic cop, and she's having a hard time breathing, her asthma. And people are really concerned about her. And then there's also a picture, I believe, on display here, of a Orthodox Jewish gentleman, and he's using his talus, his prayer shawl, to breathe through. I think it's important for us to see this and be hurt by it and grieve and learn from that and then focus on healing. You never know what's gonna happen next day and don't ever take anything for granted. And 10 years is a long time, but it seems just like yesterday. And I'm just very fortunate to be here. I'd like to thank you guys very much for uh, coming here and listening to me talk. <laughs>